Hi, Life Enthusiast. This is Martin Patella for the Life Enthusiast podcast. And with me, I have an old friend and co-producer, Scott Patton. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy to be back. Of all things, Scott is back in Canada. Our globe trotter has found yes. way back into his native land. I have. I have. It's nice to be home. Is it? Yep. <laughs> well, it, uh, right. it's nice to be home and and because my family is here i'm happy to see them and, and the rest of it and it also uh, inspires me to get back out because i've got a lot of the world i still want to see and i haven't seen it yet and uh, being back here is like yeah i, I want to really go and see that so but it's nice to be home great yeah in fact um well, this is our annual review. That's right. I want to say most people may be watching it after the New Year's or after Christmas, but maybe not. We may end up posting it before because uh, I have some urgent messages <laughs> relating to December 21. So I wanted to open up with a little bit of a review of the last 12 months. Like what, what has happened? You know, what have we done? Where are we? What's going on? When we were recording back in early December of 2019, little did we know no, we were that's in for. I mean, we were talking about the astrology, and I was talking about, hey, listen, we have this Pluto and Capricorn, and we have this great conjunction, and it's going to hit January 12th, and brace yourself, and that's go then it's going to get amplified in March, and then it's going to get further amplified in June. And then it's really going to kick up in November. Well, yeah, you hit the nail on the head with that one. Let me tell you. You're absolutely right on. Yeah. Astrology is a funny mistress. You don't know what she's going to bring you, but she sure is uh, intense, right? It got, it got amped and amped and amped. And, and, you know, it's interesting because it's an opportunity for people to really see who they are because when things are going good it's there's no challenge but when we have the type of challenge that we've gone through you really get an understanding of what you're made out of i remember wayne dyer saying on stage one day when i saw him live he said when you squeeze a orange what do you think it comes of it comes out of it and we yeah, scream orange juice and he says, and why? Because it's, it's an orange. Solid. And then he, then he says, well, so what happens when they squeeze you? What comes out of you? Mm. And yeah. the logical answer is whatever you're full of. Yeah. And we've seen a lot of what the world is full of this year. Right. So, uh, yes. Not, I, don't, I don't mean that in a sarcastic or mean way, but I mean... There's, you know, you've seen, we've seen riots in, in all over the place. We've seen people, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of people in Europe and in the United States, uh, you know, standing up and saying, you know, this is what we, what we believe in. And then we've had people that are like, I spent a lot of the last year in Medellin, Colombia, and there were a lot of people who would get trucks and they would fill the trucks up with bags of le lettuce and carrots and food. And then they would drive them up into the uh, ghetto areas, the, the uh, communas that were poor, and they'd be giving that food out to all of these people. So there was, you know, we've, the news will focus on all the negative things, but there was also a lot of really positive things that came out. Mm -hmm. That's really neat. Yeah. People helping one another, right? Yeah, and people and people who could help, helping the people that needed the help, right? Like right. young mothers with uh, you know young children, and they're just you know no one you know no parent. Like in, the weird thing about Colombia is when you talk to somebody who's twenty six, say, and you ask them about their family, the chances are they only have one of their parents alive. Which, which is shocking to me, right? Like That is shocking. You know, like, well, I live with my mom. Well, where's your dad? Well, he passed away eight years ago or something. You know, those were the, I heard, I mean, there's always a lot of divorcing going on too, but in, in uh, 
in my case, when I the people that I was talking to, I was shocked at how many had one. My, you know, my dad died when I was born, you know, or it was usually the father that passed away. Well, and you can understand because 20 years ago, Pablo Escobar was shooting up everybody. So there were a lot of people who of, of that age, you know, that parenting age who would have young children who are now in their 20s that got shot. And I went on a walking tour of Medellin and the uh, tour guide was 35 years old. And he says, you know, I was sitting, standing on the street corner with my three best friends and a motorcycle came by when I was 15 and he just sprayed bullets, killed three of my friends and I got shot in the leg. And For no good reason, just... Uh... No, I mean, they, yeah, like, well, he, he just said we were hanging out like any teenager would hang out and, uh, you know, it's tragic, right? I mean, I laughed just now, but it, it was really sad and really tragic and it informed how he sees the world and how he grew up and, and uh, you know, a lot of his attitudes and everything else. But what I found interesting about Medellin in general was how peaceful and happy the people were. And in the beginning, I couldn't quite understand it. And then I thought, well, you know, if 20 years ago, if you were walking down the street, you had a good chance of getting shot by some random guy. Uh, and now you don't, right? I mean, sure, there are places where you don't want to go, uh, just like in any big city. But, mm -hmm. but generally speaking, you are safe. Like you can go to the store and you know that on the way home, you're not going to get shot by some guy on a motorcycle who's aiming at some other guy on a motorcycle. Yeah. You're, you're safe. And yeah. how would you feel? Like, Oh, you'd be happy. Right? right. Yeah. I mean, we've heard this about New York, right? In the 1970s, New York was a declining city with crime on the rise. And you practically were afraid to go many places. Yes. They stepped down on, on law and order and got it cleaned up. Yep. And they're a lot happier now than they were then. So, yeah. All right. So, Anyway, the theme was Pluto and Capricorn of our predictions, and it started in 2008, and it's still running. The end of Pluto and Capricorn is in 2024. So we have four more years for it to unwind its relentlessness. So, it, so we've had this year in particular, we've just gone through, Martin, where everything is amplified, amplified, amplified. And I think, yeah. I, you know, I think if you look at all areas of, of life in general around the world, we can see examples of that. So are, is what you're saying now is it's going to sort of like relax? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, darn. no, no, no. The January 2020 was the kickoff. And then we now in December 21 of this year, what we have coming is known as the great conjunction. When Jupiter meets with Saturn, and they are now moving on out of Capricorn into Aquarius. Now, Saturn is the stern father, and Jupiter is the jovial uh, mm. amplifier, like the, the guy with $100 bills in his wallet that he's just handing out drinks for okay. everyone kind of thing. So are you saying the Roaring Twenties are about to get started? No, 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 no. Uh, I, mean, I keep hoping for parties and you keep no. like putting a wet blanket on me. No, no, no. This is going to be very much dramatic. Well, let me just tell you a few things that, that are in the store, right? Okay. Like, first of all, we just did, this is recorded on December 3, two days ago, we had a lunar eclipse. Yeah. We portends an information release, a healing oh. energy, right? Okay. So we are going to now start to learn secrets that were holding us from healing. Oh. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if finally the aliens been pop, down. pop out and just say, yeah, we've yeah, been, been hiding them all we've along. Been in, we've been in Area 51 and we decided we wanted a vacation. <laughs> well, they have been here all along, right? But our government has been hiding it and repressing it right. and all of that. And so it would not surprise me any if in not very long time from now, it actually just went into, yep, yep, there it is. So Martin, what do you think the general reaction of the world would be if there was like, yeah, here's some flying saucers. These guys came from Orion or 
Alpha Centauri. And all of those. You places. think there would be? You would? You think there would be like a whole bunch of panic? Would there be? I mean, obviously in the beginning there's going to be like shock, and then it's going to sink in. Uh, well, there are two scenarios that I'm thinking of. One is that the government, with its militaristic control and police forces and all of that, they are vested in them being the highest force on Earth. Right. And they won't be if there are aliens running around with spaceships. Because once you realize that there are guys with technology that lets them cross light years, that clearly makes our stuff look puny. Right. Right. And they can. I mean, they can stop nuclear weapons from Well, they would have to be able to, right? Because it's a long, it's a long way, unless they travel some way that we haven't thought of, that's a long way to go and not die. Right. Well, the way I understand it is that uh, gravity travels faster than speed of light. And uh, they are using that. Like mm. the Einstein set Model. of ideas suggests that speed of light is the highest speed available or achievable. But apparently it's not that way. Right. So that's one. Anyway, so that's that's one. I don't I don't want to go into the weeds on it. I'm just saying, okay, two scenarios. So some one things, is some secrets are gonna come out. Yeah. It it this would be like the big one, right? For me. Right. But there could be small ones like who uh, killed it, JFK? Yeah, who killed JFK? Well, that is out. We know that it's just not out in the public public. Right. The meeting of the 20 people who met in Dallas on the night before they shot him, it would shock you. Any, anyone who wants to get the link to the video, to the documentary, just call me. I don't want to just put it out there, but if, if you're interested in knowing, uh, I can send you the link. It's on BitChute and you can watch it. It's a okay. long one. It's three hours and 12 minutes of a documentary, wow. but you can have it. I haven't seen it, so I'm going to, I'll ask you for it. I don't want to get into the weeds on that either. But anyway, so I see these two scenarios, which is the, uh, the powers that are in power now are fearful of this information release. So right. they may want to release it in such a way that they are a threat, that they are actually the enemy, right? Like right now, the big threat is everybody because they have managed yeah. somehow to create this uh, fear of each other. Right. Because if I'm, how do I put it? Because I am a potential carrier of this virus that makes everyone radioactive. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. Oh, it's, it's nasty as hell. And that's part of the problem, I think, regardless of, you know, the secrets, whatever the secrets are, and they come out, it seems like these, we'll just call them the powers of be that are expert at spinning it so that it keeps people in a, in a state of fear. Right. And, and uh, it's just absolutely amazing how effective they have been. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking they may be interested in keeping the aliens as the ace in the hole where they would pull that as as if the aliens were dangerous as if they were mm -hmm. malevolent as if they were a threat to us somehow which they can't be because if they were a threat they would have long ago enslaved every one of us into whatever purpose they want right because they have this technology anyway so that's that so that's that's the one scenario of the information. And the other one is, we actually realize that we are mm, a spiritual being having a human experience and that we are practically eternal and that this experience is just um, something that we control, that the inner world actually dictates what happens in the outer world. And this one is not easy because um, no. the, the, the sentence is, I believe it when I see it. Yeah, that's, that's, back, it that's, that's a backwards sentence because you cannot have what you cannot imagine. You cannot materialize what you cannot conceive and you cannot possess what you cannot create first within. 
Yeah, and I've always found that a really an interesting concept uh, because so much of what we do is subconscious or unconscious versus conscious, right? Yeah. So you have you have this these people with really bad exterior experiences, and but I'm a good person and I never wanted this and. And when I've had those bad experiences and I've said those things, because I have, that, and I sit back and I think about it, I think, yeah, this is telling me what's really going on inside me so I can see what's going on inside me and where I need to work and fix and heal and pay attention to. Because the subconscious, I can't know what it is, but I can see around me uh, what's happening. And then if I make the connection that what's going on around me is reflecting what's in me, then I know, hey, I got to work on, you know, the anger issues because everyone around me is fighting and throwing tomatoes at me and other people or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and I can remember, I lived in a, a suburb of Vancouver called New Westminster for a few years. And I was divorced and separated, divorced at the time. And I was on the fourth floor of this building. And I was dating this gal who was a uh, child therapist. So my, I had just been separated. My kids, I was worried. And so who am I dating? A child therapist who can keep an eye on my children. Not thinking that. Like I didn't look for a child therapist. She just came into my life and we liked each other. And, and, but she was also a recovering drug addict, which I didn't realize. Right. And um, <laughs> so... Finally, she says to me, Scott, I can't come over to your place anymore. If you want to get together, you got to come over to my place. And I'm like, why? I can't handle the drugs. I'm around, if I'm around drugs, I want to have drugs. And I'm like, I don't even smoke. My roommate doesn't even smoke. Like we have one beer a month and that's the worst thing we do. What are you talking about? So she says, come with me. So she takes me over to the balcony and I, you can see all the roads, right? So she says, you see that car down there? Yeah. Guy's going to come out the door in a minute. Guy comes out the door and puts his hand in the car and takes his hand out of the car. They just exchanged drugs, Scott. And you see that car over there? Yeah. Well, there's a guy going to come out the door over there. And a guy comes out. And, there's, and she points out all these things that I've been totally oblivious to for the last six months. And they're all like, I'm surrounded by drug addicts and I have no idea. And a few months later, I'm walking down one of the streets uh, in New West, and you can hear ambulances and fire trucks and police sirens all around me. But the street I'm on is absolutely dead quiet. There's no one walking on it. There's no cars on it. There's no nothing. But you can hear all this stuff. And I just imagine this big bubble around me with all this chaos on the other side of the bubble. Yeah. And, uh, you know, because I've been working on peace and peace of mind and everything else. And I just thought, oh, it was really amazing. Yeah, you just triggered two ideas. One was the Maharishi Mahesh, the Transcendental Meditation Group, who decided to meditate. I think it on, was on Washington, D.C. And they did that for a month. And in the, for that month, crime rate dropped by 20%. It just yeah. phew, quieted it down, right? In Washington, too, whereas that's insane. Right. So that's one. <laughs> and the other one is British Columbia has had 300 people die of, of uh, coronavirus. Yes. 1,500 people, five times as many in that same time period of fentanyl overdose. Yeah, that's been so, so sad. And everybody is just completely freaked out about this flu virus. And, and yet, statistically, it's, it's a it's fifth different. of the problem that the drugs are. Yeah, it's everybody's worried about someone getting you know, breathed on. And most of the people that died are over 70, if not over 80. Mm -hmm. And we have five times, like you say, five times more. I saw the same article, five times more people passed, you know, died from drug overdose. And yet, Nobody's doing anything about it, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. It's no, not, no, no, no. Not, well, drug overdose is not, a drug overdose. You take fentanyl, it shuts down your back brain, it shuts down your breathing, and you simply yeah. are gone because the, the body shuts down. Yeah. There is an antidote. If they get to you fast enough, they can, uh, I think it's called naloxone or something like that. 
and uh, if they give it to you, you it negates the drug and you come back. So is that used for anything like in the hospitals? Which, fentanyl? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's pain control. It's the most blissful thing you can imagine. Oh, I see. It is phenomenally blissful. So if you can, this is, this is like chasing the dragon's tail, right? Like you want to take the dose that's close to dying, but not dying. And you'll be in a state of bliss. It's very blissful. But the problem with this stuff is that it, uh, 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 what's the word? It keeps desensitizing you. So you need a higher and higher dose. More and more. But there are two secrets. You don't know what your dose is and you don't know what you're getting. Because right. this, if this were controlled, right? If this was a public thing, you could say, well, doctor, please give me 37 milligrams or micrograms, whatever the number is. Of, right. uh, of or the doctor could tell you what you would need. Yeah, well, you could you could expect, right? Hey, listen, you gave me a 40 and didn't quite do it. Could you give me a 50? Mm. But when you buy it on the street, you might be getting a 500. Boom, you're out, you're right. gone. And then they mix it in with, their, with the Coke and other drugs too. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, some <laughs> uppers, downers, all of it together. Uh, <laughs> recently, there was a five or six dead people all in one apartment. Um, it was a party and they thought they were taking MDMA, Molly. They thought they were going to get happy, lovey, mellow. Instead, they all died of fentanyl because some idiot drug dealer, maker, whatever, mixed fentanyl into it. Mm. So what I get from what we've just been talking about is our priorities as a society are kind of backwards. Yep, definitely that. So that was the um, the shift, right? So this December 21, great conjunction, Jupiter and Saturn, we're going to amplify the daddy issues. And by daddy issues, I mean the stern father who says, stupid, you idiots, you just aren't doing it right. Change. And the shifting focus is from institutions onto inventions. We should start seeing changes in the internet, in how we do things, what we do it with, new tools, new ways of doing things. Um, and the established uh, institutions are going to be losing power, which is one of the reasons why they're hanging on so tightly right now. Yet they will be losing power. That, that they, I don't know why they don't read these uh, astrological predictions. Maybe they do and they fight against it. They fight it anyway, but... Okay. So, so that, then December 23, Mars, the planet of fighting. December 23, 2020? Oh, yeah. It's coming right up. Okay. So Mars, like, Mars gets to square weeks. Pluto, which is like a kick it up. Things right. that were hidden will come into the fore. I don't know what's getting released. I mentioned the aliens, but it could be all kinds of other stuff that previously was unknown will need to become known. And with Mars, you've got war. Conflict. Well, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, combative. Yeah. Combative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And well, that, we're seeing that. We're seeing that there's lots of there's, it's like there's two groups of depend, pick a topic. There's two groups and they don't like each other. Yep. And that not going down, it is building up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the pressure cooker is on tight and it's going to blow. Yeah. So I would say that the prison is within, right? The, the inner world, the inner conflict, the unwillingness to see the humanity in everyone. Mm. Lack of empathy. Yeah, lack of empathy. Um, that that all needs to be resolved somehow, and it may be resolved quite dramatically. So anyway, there's one. There are, there are three more dates that I want to throw on to right. this because we actually have. It's sort of like a date, you know. It's like in the calendar because it's predetermined on when this thing happens. Right. So one funky date is this is January 20, 2021. That's actually the inauguration date in the United States. Right. Let me read. Is it 
20 or 21? Uh, whatever. 19, it's close enough. This, this, event, one day. this, this celestial event is for December, uh, January 1920 and 21 of 2021. Wow. It, it brackets the inauguration. Brackets, yeah. Wow. And this is the Uranus, the yeah. cosmic change agent, which is delivering this massive uh, political disturbance. Whoa. Here, here, here are the keywords. Shock event, sensational revelations, cataclysmic change, radical activity mm. i mean what all could that, you imagine that this could portend right we, we we've been living the build-up to it so far so oh, i yeah. can just yeah. this is this is almost like you have a, you have filled the uh, balloon with hydrogen and you're about to put a match to it this is the. And if you didn't, if you didn't know any astrology, and you were thinking about, you know, the last six months and the next six months, if there's any date that would really pop out, it's January 20, 21, yeah. right in there. It's like yeah. it's going to be a massive day. However, it works out. <laughs> yeah. So, I would not be surprised if we have nationwide protests. If we had. Uh... Release a uh, release of information that previously was unavailable. Mm -hmm. I don't know who's going to be doing the releasing. You know, I, right. I, I don't know whose camp you're on. I don't know who you're rooting for, but it's going to be massive. Yeah, at and least massive. the stars say that it is. I don't know that. Right, right. It's like this cosmic script, and we're just playing it out. <laughs> Yeah. on cue oh yeah yeah, yeah. We're, it's it's sort of like it's sort of like when you're running a race circuit right like there are corners in a specific order right like if you were a formula one driver you know okay this is a 270 degree to the right then straight gear two three four five hard brake turn left you know blah blah right right like yeah. you know when the corner's coming you just don't know what's around the corner. Oh, yeah, how you're going to make it. There could be a pileup of guys that have hit the brakes, right? You're mm -hmm. screaming into it and, oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. yeah. Right? <laughs> wow. All okay, right. so you said there was two more. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's coming. But I want to uh, just, just circle back. A little while ago, it was a hockey game in Vancouver, B.C., and it was Vancouver team. I think they were playing Boston, and Vancouver lost the game seven. Yes, the finals, the Stanley Cup finals, twenty eleven. Was it that? Okay. Anyway, it was on the full moon. <laughs> oh. And then, then people went into the streets right. and rioted the heck out of it. I don't know if you remember. Uh, yeah, yeah, I remember. I mean, there was massive uh, property destruction. The normally polite and docile Canadians just went totally poof. Wide. Yeah, it was like a hundred thousand people were down filling the filling the streets. Oh yeah, and and, and wrecking property and uh, rolling police cars over, lighting them on fire. Yeah. So it was a disaster. Anyway, different different uh, celestial event. However, just saying. There is some predictability, and we called it. Right. Okay, so so going forward, there is a Saturn, which is the granddaddy of, of the, if you don't do things right, or only the stuff that's real, or only the stuff that's solid and, and verifiably real, gets pushed will square Uranus, which is the disruptor and inventor and whatever. So, and that, that gets hit on February, June, and December of next year. Oh, wow. Now, the, the key words for these are liberation, but not without hard work. Right. Not for free. Right. Overcoming fears, 
Overcoming wow. pain. Yeah. Breaking down of useless structures. <laughs> yes. Okay. So we're looking, forward to, we're looking forward to that by December of 2021, it will have finished its work, right? Like these are, these are the three passes. First hit in February, um, second hit in June, and last hit in December. So wow. by, the so time, it, by the time you and I are recording the next one, we will know what this all has meant. Right. And it could right. be a very different world. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, either very different in a good way or very different in a bad way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, we could we could easily be living under a uh, fascistic, uh, domineering mm-hmm. government, police state that uh, completely dominates us in horrible ways. Or we could be um, able to express ourselves freely. Right. Yeah. Yeah, the, my heart, well, you know, people might know this, I'm a refugee from the communist world, right? Like, I, I grew up in a police state. Um, I gave up my family, I gave up my friends, I gave up all the stuff I grew up with to not be there. I came here in search of freedom, and now I'm threatened with having to escape again. Right. Right? What will I give up this time? Or maybe I will be a change agent that's going to contribute to the um, to the better choices and the destruction of nature, uh, promote inner work over external, uh, do inner healing work, um, help people understand that the um, that the soul is immortal and that the body doesn't matter so much. Cool. It could be me who has to <laughs> kiss it away. Don't know. So, well, is there anything else in astrology for next year? No, that's those are the big ones. That's the big ones. Okay. So, anyway, as far as I'm concerned, there's going to be no stone or no no structure left standing. It's going to be very different. But, yeah. you know, think of it backwards, right? Uh, the event that kicked this off is a reflection of what happened in 1518. In 1519, Martin Luther nailed the uh, uh, um, 31, I think it was, thesis on a piece of paper to a church door. And then the next 200 years, Europe was at war with itself. The, the Catholics right. and the Protestants headed out with each other. It was not without struggle right, and suffering. And that's a problem that we have in our McDonald's society because we think, oh, well, you know, by the end of the year, it'll be done. And you just said it could take another 200 years. Well, it took them. Yes. The information age gives us speed. <laughs> you know, like when he, when he put it up on the church door, how many people read it? How many right. people knew how to read it? Um, right. Ten. Right. And then it was told to one another and, and whatever. I, you know, it, the, the propagation and percolation was a lot slower than we have. Right. 